Welcome back to John's Daily Calls. This is where we're going to guide you guys through the market and trade, trade, trade. Today, we are talking about FC Pro event, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Thunderstruck, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, fodder as well, just to keep you guys interested. But today is going to be focused on FC Pro, what to expect, the ideas and, the and theories of what the market should look like with momentum and the consistency throughout the trades. Now, we all understand that, you know, I think the big consensus is everybody's like, Oh, you go for the ones that have the best car, the best players in tradition, right? Now, take that idea, use it as a theory, but throw it out the door because it doesn't matter when it comes down, right? It doesn't matter. All it matters is these guys win or lose, and that's what's going to change the value of these cards when it comes down to it. But here's the thing. We have three chances. To, I have three or four chances. I don't know how many matches they play, but uh, the, in Group A is going to be the ones playing today. We got Mark 11. We got Hildago. We got Yilmaz, Umat, and Lucas. Now, these, uh, these are the three cards that are tradable. We got Mane. Uh, Muani and Malin. So I'm I'm invested pretty heavily. I've got like a couple hundred thousand in Malin just for fun. Honestly, I wish I had more, but as you guys know, the the fodder trade we're kind of backed up, backlogged on that. But the main thing is you don't never want to take a loss. But you know, if you want to if you want to get out and get into this right now, you still have a small window of opportunity. These are trading at like 22. Uh, the Deli Ali's actually come up. Uh, Kolomani uh, Muani hasn't moved at all through through the night. He came up he came up a little bit yesterday, and now he's he's staying kind of relative flat. So I still like this one. I still like. Uh, I think Muani still has an opportunity. I believe uh, Sadio Mane, the player that's based with Sadio Mane, has Hildago. He's been in the top four eight times, eight times. That is usually very solid. That means he should. This one should definitely get a plus one. And also, guys, we have new. We have a new leak with uh, the new like some Saudi cards coming out. So this could be this could be relatively okay with some hype and some volume. So all three of these are gonna be interesting. They all, if they win one match, if they just, if all of these players win one match, they upgrade. So every game is going to matter. It's like playing uh, the UCL RTTKs, like having four matches in the same day. That's what it's going to be like. So uh, we will be live for this. So if you guys want to join us, twitch.tv slash John Sims, we will be watching it. I'll have it displayed just like you see the screen here. And we'll be watching. And I'll be talking about my ideas. And hell, I might even go through some uh, Sims training and break it down a little bit. But the main concept is, okay, so here's the strategy. If you guys are already invested or you're not invested yet, you should be right now. Uh, it's just treading through the waters. Now, what I have noticed is Malin's about the only one that's kind of moved up. He was about 19 he was about 20, 19 uh, over the past couple days. Now, uh, I think there's a lot of volume on this one. 23 is his highest. So I still think that this is the last chance to get in. This is the last chance to get in right before these matches. Uh, same thing with the other stuff. But Kolomwani could easily hit about 700K. It could easily hit 700K due to volume. It could easily hit this point very, very quickly with a plus one. Plus two, you get, he gets two wins. Now you're going to talk about something a little bit wild, okay? So the thing about it is, this is going to be a wild, insane day all day long. It's going to be insane for the next several hours. So make sure you guys join us live and tune into the FC Pro event. But basically, guys, here's, here's the trade strategy. What's going to happen is they're going to play, essentially, they have a few upgrade opportunities. So this is how this works. The first, they win one match, they get an upgrade. They win two matches, they get a play style. They win three matches and a draw, or throughout it, they get 10 points. They essentially get two upgrades and a play style. So the max you can get, I believe, today is the 10 points. And then they play again, I believe, they play again later on. Um, and so these are going to come later. These are going to come for the actual uh, tournament. There's another group bait. There's another group stage. So if if they get if they get two wins and don't qualify, they still get an upgrade in form and a play style. You just have to wait for the next group. So there's value here. They don't lose their value tremendously, but this is what I believe is going to happen. Volume of volatility in the stock in the market, guys, basically goes like this. It's going to go. It's going to go. Flat, 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 flat. Game's gonna start to rise. Somebody's gonna win them is gonna get a goal. Now, here's the thing in esports, guys, there might be five, six, seven goals in the game. It's not like betting, it's not like sports betting on a, a, a standard uh, football match. It's not like that, where, you know, the, the team that scores first, 
there's a really hard chance to get it back. You know what I mean? And you know, hard, very. It's it's like it's like a hundred one odds every single time. Uh, if the team if the team comes back from a one nil deficit, right? It's much harder to come back from a one nil deficit than it is to you know be ahead, right? But in esports, it's not like that. It's very p fast paced. It's movement. Uh, these matches are a little bit longer too, so they should be. They I believe they're extended to is it ten minutes? Uh, but they're longer, eight minutes. They're longer matches, and so it allows. Anyways, in games momentum uh but basically they win one match it's not the end of the match if they lose one match it's not the end of the world if they win one match market should start to rise right because they're looking for that next play style then what happens when they go into that next match so the thing about it is it's not just a pump and dump after the first match it's not a pump and dump after the second match it's they're all going to be independent of how they're playing and their style. So they all have upgradable value between the first day. The only match that really truly matters is if they can no longer get an upgrade on the day and when, uh, or, yeah, when they can no longer get an upgrade. So if they have won, let's say two matches, they have drawn one, right? And they're on the fourth match and they lose. They can't get an upgrade. There's no value there, right? It's that one's going to be wild. Now, if they win two, they draw one, and then they win the third one, then the market's going to be a little bit wild because they just got this second upgrade. But that's when it's most likely going to be peaked during the match. Now, if they have lost three matches and they're drawn at that moment, what could potentially happen is the same volatility. Now, if they if they lose two matches and then they win their third, that might be they still have upgrade they still have an upgradable opportunity. But have they lost two if okay, so if they have lost two matches and they've won one, or if they've won two matches and have lost one, they can no longer get the the inform upgrade. So that means that if once they win two matches, they have to have a draw. They cannot take an L. That's basically it. They cannot take an L. Once they get two wins, they cannot take an L to still have value. So that's kind of the idea. Two wins, no L, and then upgradable all the way un until the last upgrade. So it's almost better if they like don't get an upgrade uh, during the match for the volume. So that is the concept. It's going to be wild. So join us live. We'll be going through it, breaking it down, uh, and what our movement is. But I'm taking a bet on the Malin card. I, I like the idea of this going to 30K more than uh, Kolo Moani going to uh, 900. So uh, is it possible for both? It's possible. It's possible, but I believe this could, this card has an opportunity to go to 30K versus the other. Anyways, all right, moving on to the Thunderstruck cards here. Thunderstruck cards, as you guys know, they're independent on Pelham. their matches as well. B Silva has been kind of this this weird one where now they're going to be probably... I they're, they're trading down, and it makes sense. It's Monday. Now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, guys, Cyber Monday, if they drop lightning rounds on us again... This should come down. Honestly, if they drop lightning rounds, it might be cheapest today, which I hate. I think it's weird. It's either today or Thursday uh, at, before these go out of packs that this card is going to be decent. The other one, those are the cards that want, you know, um, I guess uh, that card lost. And so, you know, they're all independent upon the upgrades that they're available to. Like Vinny, this team won, and then now he's come down. They're still in packs. These cards are still in packs, so they're technically still investable. Whatever still has upgradable value, guys, they should all have upgradable value technically. But which one ever had the most is going to be the de most decent. I like all of them, and I like a marginal trade. I also like a Vandersar, especially if uh, I I wish I really wish Footbin would put like a like a, a tracker right here, like a form for if, for when they have potential upgrades. I think that'd be really nice. But I'm still okay on this card. It's already gone up 10% while everything else is kind of going down. And uh, that's that's kind of my uh, that's kind of my take on that one. That's uh, that's exactly what we've been talking about. But uh, when it comes to fodder, guys, we're in this position where it's just EA just dropping lightning rounds after 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 lightning rounds, after lightning rounds selling 5,000 of them and not even giving up. You know what I'm trying to say? They they are at a position where I've I, they they are just being thirsty and hungry for uh for just destroying the market. So. And that in and you know by all means can they do that for sure uh is it is it opportunistic for you guys to get out and get into the fc pro yes is it also opportunistic to hold on to these and 
try to get to, to get that coin back if you don't have time watching the FC Pro today. Yes, it's there's opportunities for both. Uh, I would recommend you guys just hold if you don't have time today. If not, I would be looking to go in on some of these Thunderstrucks if you have the opportunity to uh, break down and analyze some of these cards and which ones have the best upgrade available. I would be looking at something like that, um, like uh, maybe even like a card like the Jillington. I think this one's a unique card uh, that has potential. It's just the three star, three star holding it down. So there's a there's a lot of opportunities today, guys. We're gonna be breaking down the FC Pro. I hope you guys join us today at twitchtv John Sims. You guys can find the link in the bio. Uh, but uh, and uh, if you guys want to see this video before anybody else does, make sure you guys subscribe to the premium. I'm gonna drop this right at 6 p.m. UK for the homies, but uh, instead of seven, just because that's when the matches drop. So until next time, guys. My name is john if you buy right you never lose we'll see you in the next one deuces